All righty. Mm, I agree. Next question. Dietary approach uh, for females with polycystic ovary syndrome. Do you think a low-carb, high-fat diet would be a better choice for fat loss due to greater insulin resistance? And if so, do you think there will be implications for maintaining uh, or optimizing lean body mass? Uh, so, yeah, this is a really good question. Um, polycystic ovary syndrome uh, is very, very common. Uh, you know, it affects, uh, from memory, I think it's like 2 to 20% of females from the age of like 15 to 44. So pretty much their, their entire, uh, you know, adult life. Um, and the important thing to realize as coaches is that we're not medical professionals, number one, um, and that, you know, syndromes like this are due to a combination of both genetic and environmental factors. So the genetic side of things, we can't really uh, influence too much. Um, however, the, obviously the environmental, uh, we have a little bit more uh, control of, but PCOS is a result of elevated androgen levels. So just having uh, more of those male hormones and you know, that results in a number of complications, primarily dysregulation of insulin. And uh, you know, it's, it's funny because the signs and symptoms of polycystic ovaries are very common amongst all females, um, you know, such as having uh, irregular menstrual cycle or, you know, no, no periods, having, uh, you know, facial hair and excess body hair like acne, you know, pelvic pain. There's, fuck, um, you know, difficulty getting pregnant. Like there's all of these, you know, uh, symptoms that are associated with it, but can be uh, occurring uh, without polycystic ovaries. And the criteria, the diagnostic criteria that they use uh, to assess whether or not somebody does have PCOS is what's known as the uh, water dam criteria. And you need to have two out of three things, which is cysts on your ovaries, insulin resistance, and uh, menstrual cycle dysfunction. And <clears throat> If somebody is diagnosed with two or more of those things, then they'll have polycystic ovaries. Um, but in terms of interventions uh, that we as coaches can uh, provide for our clients to, to help manage this, um, number one, there's no cure for it, but you can uh, improve somebody's uh, you know, symptoms related to that. And primarily, that's going to occur by losing weight and exercising more because that will improve insulin sensitivity. So yes, it's theorized. Uh, and there's actually clinical data that does show that a low carb diet um, can improve uh, you know, insulin resistance uh, in women with polycystic ovaries. Um, however, at the end of the day, losing weight is gonna have the biggest benefit uh, on somebody who is insulin resistant and uh, you know, has PCOS. Uh, so getting your clients to adhere to a calorie deficit, which will mean they're going to need to eat less than maintenance and whatever they adhere to best is going to satisfy that. So that's what I would be focusing on primarily and getting them to lift weights. Lifting weights is highly uh, beneficial in terms of improving insulin mm -hmm. sensitivity. Um, so potentially getting them to train uh, more frequently. So upwards of, you know, four sessions a week um, and daily exercise. So, you know, getting them to walk um, and just moving because muscle contraction, um, you know, increases skeletal muscle insulin sensitivity, which is hugely beneficial. Um, but there are some supplements that uh, have been shown uh, clinically and, you know, with research uh, to support, uh, you know, people with polycystic ovaries and they're called the inositols. Um, I don't know a hell of a lot about them, but the rationale uh, behind their use is to manage insulin resistance. Um, and it's suggested that these uh, inositols uh, can reduce insulin resistance, number one, but also improve uh, ovarian function and reduce androgen levels in women with polycystic ovaries. So uh, for what that's worth, uh, yeah. That's uh, what I would be advising my clients would be number one, lift weights regularly um, and exercise daily. Number two, 
lose weight, uh, you know, through a high protein, you know, moderate to high fat, low to moderate carb diets, um, you know, imp- increasing their fiber consumption um, as well. It's always going to be beneficial. And then, you know, potentially supplementing with, you know, one of the two inositols. Um, and then making sure that they're actually testing their, you know, uh, blood sugar levels. You know, if there's somebody who's telling you they got polycystic ovaries and they're struggling with all of, you know, these insulin related issues, then, you know, they should be measuring that and, you know, seeing a doctor or an endocrinologist regularly to assess, um, you know, any changes in their, their, their markers of health. Um, and their hormone levels. So we aren't qualified to do that, which is really important to remember. And I think uh, working alongside a a professional and somebody who is qualified to do that is uh, always going to be your best bet. So don't be afraid to, you know, speak to your client's doctors or ask for, you know, further advice and information from them. Um, because that's always going to show the client number one, that you care and you're, you're doing more than what's expected and that you're invested in, uh, you know, helping them overcome, you know, these issues. But number two, it's, it's just good practice and it shows that you're, you're diligent and doing the right things and staying in your lane. Yeah, no, I I think you've, again, you've pretty much covered all bases there. I, I just, yeah, to speak on a certain point is whenever like, insulin resistance is thrown about low carb high fat is kind of the next step that everyone kind of goes to jump to but there are so many factors that influence insulin sensitivity as jacob touched on it's like yeah getting plenty of fiber water and a good night's sleep at night like sleep is one of the biggest factors that determines your tolerance for carbohydrates the next day you know like making a conscious effort to de-stress and not just be one of those, you know, those girls, it's just a bundle of stress and emotion and, you know, that can't tolerate having that, you know, that extra bit of work put on their desk or that email at 5.03 PM or something like that. Like if you're, if you're not coping with, you know, those kinds of things and you're staying on your phone until 11 PM at night and then going up and being like, Oh, I've got to go and do my cardio at 5.30 AM the next morning. It's like, you've got so many factors to worry about before low carb, high fat is going to be the, you know, the miracle cure. And the final thing I'll say is just remember that the body works in uh, something, like I said earlier, like an incremental fashion or a categorical fashion. It's like, yes, a doctor will say, yes, you have PCOS, or no, you don't. Like it's, they will give you a binary answer, but the body doesn't work in a binary manner. Mm. Um, don't, don't just be like, oh, I've got this, I'm broken. Like so many clients come to us and it's like, oh, you know, what brings you to JPS? And they're like, oh, I've got high cortisol, I've got PCOS, I've got insulin resistance, I've got this, that, or the other. It's like, well, shit, you're not broken. Like, just your body's still going to respond to, yeah, training, cardio, energy expenditure, you know, protein, fiber, water, all kinds of things. You know, so I think something I I speak to to trainers and coaches a lot about is making sure that you don't use loaded language or damaging language. Um, You know, I think uh, inflammation is probably the easiest example of this. It's like, if you're a healthcare practitioner, it's like you tell that client, oh, you've got high inflammation levels or something like that. They're going to carry that around with them for like probably the next three decades thinking they've got high inflammation levels. It's like all these kind of healthcare practitioners just offload information onto clients and clients have no idea what to do with it. If you are coaching females with PCOS, don't stress about it and don't let them stress about it. Like all the fundamentals will still work at the end of the day. As Jacob said, there are some methods to manage the symptoms and, you know, potentially fine tune the result of, you know, rather than it being 98% effective, it's hundred percent effective or whatever, like they're, they're minutia. But at the end of the day, like they are not broken. They're still a human. They're walking around, they're going to work. They're seeing their boyfriend, they're doing whatever. Like they'll be fine. Just coach them as you would give them some extra love and attention, whatever, but they'll be, yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, awesome. I think that's a really important point because the more you exacerbate uh, an existing fear, the more 
problematic, you know, things become. So yeah, treating them as you would any other clients, respecting their issues and, and paying enough attention yeah. to them uh, to obviously make them feel like you're aware and that you do care, but not uh, beyond, you know, beyond that. Um, any more than is necessary is only going to, yeah, heighten the problem. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. 